Good morning, everybody. Welcome out here to the farm. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about preparing for winter. And nobody wants to talk about that. It is middle of July. Why in the world would David be talking about preparing for winter? Folks, it's right around the corner. And uh, we have to stay one step ahead. So stay with us for this video. Thank you. I cannot say enough of how useful of a tool um, this um, grazing chart has been. And guys, you can search this and find this on the internet. I recommend you do it just for your own records. You can like, you can see this is how my April started off and then May got a little bit off track and then June went crazy all over the place. And then it's kind of settled down a little bit more in July. Now, you notice I wrote out a whole lot of stuff in pencil up there that I've crossed out. But my actual days that were those fields were grazed is written in pen. And sometimes the plan doesn't work out the way you want it to. But you can't... I, I, everybody that is a grazer needs to have one of these charts. Whether that's in a three ring binder or if you're just wanting to put it up on a wall like me in your barn this is a great tool but another great tool is to have a map of your farm and go ahead and have all your fields marked off that way you know which field you're talking about and you can come back and reference this whenever you see a note somewhere it says hey there's only this much growth in this one numbered field you can actually come back and find that so that, that's like homework 101. Get get a grazing chart and print out. Go to Google Maps. Go to your in our uh, natural resource office. Uh, do whatever you need to do to get a map of your farm and kind of number out your fields that you're uh, counting. So yeah, that's, that's homework number one. But we're going to go to the field and show you what's going on. here we are out on the field and we are slowing the cows down right now you can see they're kind of in that strip right there that is about one acre plus I'll show you the little calves over here too but this one field um, we're slowing them down because we are getting ready for the most important growing seasons of the year August and September are the two most important months in developing grasses for winter. And we definitely want to grow as much grass as we can because hay bales are, uh, even to cut them on my own farm, with fertilizer costs uh, kind of amortized out and kind of at a cost per bale if you add in fertilizer and I don't have my own baling equipment, so I hire someone at a very good rate, I might say, to uh, to bale all the hay for us. But, folks, it's $85 a bale right now, and that's a lot of money. And you think you need four bales per cow. Yeah, that's, if you put, uh, that's just insane to be able to put that much into a cow every single winter. So, we're going to be trying to grow as much grass over the next two months as possible 
uh, but we're having to slow the cows down right now. So we're putting, we were putting them in two acre paddocks. Now we're going to one acre paddocks. And the other reason for that is they eat more of the grass down. The protein content is better in the grass as it regrows because it's been grazed lower. But yeah, well, um, that's kind of our plan of attack right now to get away from the incredible price of hay and to, um, to manage the farm the best we can. So hang on one second, we're going to move these cows. Another useful tool for your farm is the grazing stick and you can get these again at your local and RCS office they have them they give them to you for free no cost this is the one thing that's going to help you on your farm and it doesn't cost you anything how useful of a tool can that be what it is it's a measuring stick it has summer grass it has measurements on how much you should be counting per cow per acre each inch of forage um, stalker horse sheep goat it works for everything so you have all that and then you have your springtime grasses when you should start grazing and start stop grazing so it's just a very very useful tool that i use here on the farm and here's what i do with it at least every three days if not every day let me show you all right guys so we're out here in the field with the cows and i want to see how much forage they have now i did this yesterday before they went into this paddock to make sure they had enough so i'm going to take my stick i'm going to stick it in the ground not try to mat anything down but then push straight down into the grass okay and at this point you go and you look where the canopy basically stops which that one blade of grass comes all the way up to above 16 inches, but that's not really where the canopy stops. I'm going to look down here, and I'm going to go more of the 12 inch range, because all the grass in this field is basically above 12 inches. So 12 inches, and that's it. Now for every inch of forage that you have in an acre, that will feed about five cows. So there's a little grasshopper you see him crawling up that leaf that's what we like to see we like to see animal or some kind of bug life into these grass areas that's wonderful all right so 12 inches so that means if i was going to graze this all the way down to like six inches which would be okay i mean going down to four inches wouldn't be the worst in the whole world but that would be pretty far down there so let's say we go from 12 to 6 that is 6 inches worth and so 6 times 5 30 cows guess how many cows I have I have well uh, I have 32 head which is including calves so really I expect this field to get down to around the 8 inch mark tomorrow when I come out here and I'll move them if they graze it down to five to six to seven that's fine um, they're not going to do that across the entire field but that's kind of what the way i use this tool every day uh, to make sure that i'm giving the cows enough enough forage to be able to live off of to be able to grow off of and then also um, it helps me to know uh, how far down they need to graze it now i want them to graze it down a little bit more because i want this grass to regrow and have a better protein content going into winter so if they graze it down to six inches um in jim garish's book kick the hay habit he recommends three inches in this time uh, at the beginning of august 
Um, I can't get myself to do that right now. Um, that's just, I, I, that probably makes sense, but it's hard for me to graze something down to three inches, um, especially with as much drought as we've had. So if we get this down to six or seven inches today, that would be just fine. I would be shocked if they're able to do that because they're not starving. Huh. They've had more than enough to eat uh, forever, but that's kind of what it is. You can see my little water line there. That's not, I mean, that is a bare spot in the soil, but that's where they ran that trencher. So don't, uh, don't yell at me for having a bare spot on my soil. It drives me nuts too, but it's, it's growing in. Everything's getting better. So yeah. All right, I want to give you a comparison. Um, this is a field that the cows were in two days ago. And, well, I say a field. This was really a paddock. They're just separated by about uh, 40 feet um, here. But this one paddock, they ate this down very well. There's some still some tall spots in it, but for the most part, they ate it down pretty good, which I'm happy about. But I want to show you this, this area where they really have eaten it and kind of show you so you can see right here some of that's eaten down to three inches some of it's eaten down to six inches some of it's five but it's in that range and this was good strong healthy grass and it's still a good strong healthy grass so we know that they weren't eating it all the way to the ground and they're eating the good nutrient dense part of the leaf. And it looks like, except for some of this over here, that they ate it down pretty decent. So this may be one of the shorter areas in the field, but I'm okay with that. That's still getting it down for between that three to six inch area um, to where I know that we're utilizing the grasses the way we should. There's still a blade left on the grass so that it can exact well, it can take in some photosynthesis and some water, and it will be able to regrow over the next two months. So if that gives you a, uh, a reference point to before and after of your fields. Yeah. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, our last video that we had was talking about grass-fed beef. And I'm happy to say that since then, we have sold out of this year's supply of grass-fed beef. But we'll have more in uh, more next year. But if you're a new farmer and you're thinking about doing something like this, don't be afraid to try to sell your own beef. I was nervous about it um, just because I didn't know huh, exactly what to expect, the pricing and stuff. And I kind of went off of how much things were costing me and how much I could get for a uh, calf and then extrapolated that out to a full-grown you know beef so don't be afraid to to test the waters as far as it comes to to selling grass-fed beef it is a wonderful product and uh, don't be ashamed of your product you worked hard for it and uh, make sure that you charge a fair price that you can make money off of don't sell a cow just to be able to get rid of it kind of to sell a good beef something that you would eat yourself and uh continuing to keep supporting the farm and let the farm support you we've got things backwards where the farm should should be a hobby and uh for some folks that's perfectly fine there's no problem with that but even with a, a day job i am not allowing myself to think that way i i need the farm to be able to support itself and support me and uh yeah don't lose don't lose your vision of what you see on your farm and if that means isolating yourself from some negative people that are out there then then do that don't let them drag you down and make you believe that it's not possible because it really is possible so hope y'all enjoyed the video and uh, we'll see you in the next one and happy grazing <laughs>